Hey yo. I hope you guys are doing okay in quarantine. I really miss you guys, so I came out from under my rock and I joined the world of the internet. Usually I'm not very tech savvy. These are my MP3 players. This is my flip phone. <laughs> this is a CD I burned yesterday. And th this is my ukulele. It doesn't really come into play here, but I just wanted to show you. I'm gonna do a, a series of videos that was going to be a series of homilies on praying together as families. So when I wrote this series, I interviewed a lot of families about how they pray together. And so I wanted to give you realistic tools to um, pray together as families. And so my hope is that during this time of isolation or solitude or quarantine, that you will pray together as families and to use this as an opportunity to grow closer to the Lord and, uh, and, and to grow in relationship with each other, to grow in relationship with the Lord. So I'm going to be talking about four different ways of praying in the coming weeks. Adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. So if you take the first letter of each of those, it spells out ACTS, A-C-T-S. Um, so I'm going to be talking about ways that you can pray together as a family in the car with, you know, adoration. Uh, and I'm going to be, for contrition, I'm going to be talking about prayers that you can pray as a family at bedtime. For Thanksgiving, I'm going to be talking about prayers you can pray as a family before you've cleared away the dishes from the table. And for supplication, things that we ask of the Lord, I'm going to be talking about morning prayer. So before I get to any of that, though, there's this precursor, this preliminary thing I want to talk to you, which is receiving from the Lord and listening to him. If prayer is a conversation, uh, probably best to let the Lord speak first and have the, the first word. So today I just want to talk about listening to the Lord and having, uh, giving, giving him space to speak to us. So I have a challenge that I want to give to all of you today. Uh, for those of you who are a parishioner here at St. Joseph's, it's a parishioner I gave you a few weeks ago, which is to spend one screen-free day a week uh, as a family. And I, now that we're quarantined, I especially, I especially reiterate this challenge to you. We have an opportunity here. Um, you have an opportunity to, to really invest in this time and to grow as spiritual leaders of your family which I really encourage you to do, to not just give in to distraction, not just to wear pajamas all day and, I don't know, watch Netflix all day or whatever. So uh, my encouragement to you is to really, um, my encouragement to you is to use this time, to use this time wisely. So here's a few reasons why you should take me up on my challenge to, to one screen-free day a week. Reason number one, following the example of Jesus. Jesus spent 40 days of silence, prayer and fasting in, in the desert, and we celebrate Lent as a time to remember that and to walk those footsteps that the Lord laid out for us. Jesus also spent 18 years in the carpenter shop in Nazareth. And we, we oftentimes in the gospel find Jesus praying up in the hills, you know, praying up in the mountains by himself. So reason number one, to follow the, the example that Jesus laid out for us. Reason number two. Silence is God's first language. Everything else is a poor translation. That's a quote from Cardinal Sarah, author of a book that I'm reading called The Power of Silence Against the Dictatorship of Noise. It's a really good book. I encourage you to read it. And this would be an excellent time to dive into that. So Cardinal Sarah writes, God's first language is silence. Everything else is a poor translation. In order to understand this language, we must learn to be silent and to rest in God. God is silence and the devil is noisy. From the beginning, Satan has sought to mask his lies beneath a deceptive, resonant agitation. When I was going through school, my seminary rector said that silence is like wine and noise is like sewage. Because with just a teaspoon of noise, you could ruin a whole, you could ruin a whole bottle of silence. Studies out of Harvard are showing that screen time interferes with everything from sleep to creativity. In 2011, the, the World Health Organization, who is now maybe kind of discredited thoroughly, but um, they, called, they called noise pollution a modern plague and concluded that there's overwhelming evidence that exposure, exposure to environmental noise has adverse effects on the health of the population. It goes on to list all of these different health problems that are linked to noise. I mean, God made us. He put us together. And so it's not surprising that science would verify, scientific studies would verify the value of what God has already taught us. And it's not just our spirits, but it's also our bodies that need silence. So why should you take me up on my challenge to one screen-free day a week, even now when you're trapped in your houses? 
first of all, to follow the example of Jesus. Second, to because second because silence is God's first language. And third, even our bodies cry out, or even our bodies cry out for silence. What does it actually look like in the concrete to have one screen-free day a week? I want to give you, I want to pass on to you some advice from Bridget, mother of four sons, and they actually practice this as a family. So I asked for her to, to pass on advice to you. So this is from Bridget. Every time you want to use your phone for something, write it down and then do it on your phone later or do what you did before you had the phone. Skip Amazon today. Check the thermometer, not your phone. Use a cookbook, not your phone. Dare I say it, use a camera, not your phone. Invite a family to dinner instead of virtually connecting with 20 families. Turn off your phone on Sundays and put it in a place where you would only want to get it in case of an emergency. In other words, put it somewhere inconvenient. Right now, there are at least 10 men in in our parish who have already taken up this challenge of being screen-free until Easter. Not just one day a week, but totally. Uh, One of them is a young dad in our parish, and he said how much more time he... He explained how much more time he has once he put his phone down. And his wife appreciates that. He's gotten a lot more done around the house. But also, he's just found that he has more time to play on the floor with his kids. So when you're dying someday on your deathbed, are you going to say, I wish I had spent more time watching television? Or are you going to say, you know, I wish I had spent more time playing on the floor with my kids or my grandkids or whatever? There are already parishioners living this out. So I know that the challenge I'm giving to you right now is is reasonable. It's not a pipe dream and you are capable of it. So I challenge you to it. One screen-free day a week, even in the midst of this quarantine, when you're when you're stuck at home, probably with cabin fever. If you want to pray and to grow closer to, to the Lord, the, this is the first step. It's just clearing the field, you know. And, and once you do that, you will be amazed at what can grow there. Mother Mother Teresa writes, God cannot fill what is full. He can fill only emptiness. So this Lent, I dare you, I dare you and your families to spend one day a week screen-free and noise-free. I I, I ask you to take a minute of silence right now. Uh, And in this minute of silence, let's ask the Lord to make time for him and to commit to one screen-free day a week this Lent. Or... Um, spend this minute telling him why you won't and what's more important to you. Right. I love you and I miss you and I hope this is over with with soon and I hope to see you all back in church as soon as possible.